So I'm writing my truss rods today. I've got these uh, double action truss rods. They are about 9mm deep and 6mm wide and I've got a 6mm cutter which will probably cut just a hair over 6mm so these should be a nice snug fit and I've marked down my centre line of my neck plank and I've just drawn a line at the end of the truss rod so the truss rod's going to come from the beginning of the nut i.e. where the zero fret would be and then it's a 420mm truss rod so the truss rod finishes just about where the heel starts it doesn't need to be any longer than that um, if you've got a truss rod that does go into the heel that's fine but the the neck blank is so much thicker there that it's not going to make, make any difference in terms of adjustment uh, if you look at how much adjustment there <laughs> is on one of these truss rods it's actually worth doing this with any new truss rod anyway to make sure it's working properly you can see your adjustment of the truss rod is in, in the middle so really when you do adjust the truss rod on your neck you're only really affecting around here so the other thing I wanted to mention quickly is that I'm actually going to make my truss rod channel ever such so slightly longer by about a millimetre than my truss rod itself and the reason for that is when you recess a truss rod i.e. you don't carry on routing all the way down so you're effectively recessing a truss rod inside and then you've got wood all around it if you make the truss rod cavity exactly the same length as the truss rod then it makes it it makes it harder for the truss rod to be adjusted and the reason for that is when you want to put relief in a neck i.e. you're bowing the neck forward towards the strings what you're effectively doing is unscrewing the truss rod and making the truss rod ever so slightly longer so by making the truss rod channel about a millimetre longer there's then that adjustment room and it won't hamper the truss rod in any way I've got my router on a track and I can literally just move this up and down the neck blank and gradually approach the 9mm depth I want. One issue, because I've already cut my headstock angles, when the track and the router gets to here, it's going to want to slope down. So to prevent it from doing that, I'm just going to stick the wings from the headstock back onto it, and then that's going to give a nice flat surface. So at the nut here, it's slightly wider, and also I'm going to have to go slightly deeper, so I'm just going to do that with a chisel. That won't take too long. And there's also, you can see, before they've wrapped, um, wrapped this in plastic, you can see there's a 
there's a weld on here that's sticking out. Now I could take this plastic off and file it down, but it'll be easier just to take a little bit out of the wood. And that should make that sit in nicely. Okay, that end sits in nicely. It's upside down. There we go. Just beneath the surface. Mm. Same on this side. I just want to. Also, where the um, where the end of the router, where the router finishes, is obviously rounded. So I need to flatten that off with the chisel as well, which is quite a quick and easy job. Gotta be it. Now we're in. Cool. Right, so one down, one to go. Two truss rods routed, 
recessed in the board just below the surface and then next up I'm going to glue up some ears I need to cut those out first so what I shall do in order to keep the grain pattern on these as close as I can get is I shall use some of the off cuts especially uh, the large piece from underneath here I shall use that and I shall cut a couple of pieces out of there and then I shall glue them across here. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode.